Welcome back to the PID Control with Arduino Lecture Series. In this lecture, we will be introducing the derivative term into the controller, and thus forming a PID controller. So in the last lecture, we ended with showing how a PI controller eliminates the steady state error through the integral term. But we also made it clear that neither the P term or I term can contribute to actively dampening the overshoots. This is where the derivative term comes into play. Let's look at how this new term handles the error signal. The job of the derivative term is to take the rate of change of the error as its control signal. So by applying a step change in the set point, we again get a positive error as shown. The D term in response produces a control signal like this. You can see how quick and aggressive this control signal is. This is the main benefit of the derivative term, is that for a sudden change, maybe due to disturbances or a change in the set point, the controller reacts quickly and aggressively. Now this sounds great, but this is a response to a step error. When an overshoot takes place, the error tends to be more sinusoidal as opposed to a step. So let's see how it reacts to a sinusoidal error. As we can see here, the control signal is leading the error signal. So before the error goes up, the control goes up. And before the error swings back down, the control has already been there. So in a way, the derivative control is predicting the future error, and it's in this getting ahead behavior that allows it to reduce the overshoots before they become significant. So adding the derivative term, we can reduce the overshoots as such. This is the main benefit of using all three terms in a PID controller. Now if there's one thing I want you guys to take away from the past lectures, it's this. The proportional term decreases the rise time, the integral term eliminates the steady state error, and the derivative term reduces the overshoots and ringing. So this concludes the explanation of the P, I, and D terms. Hopefully by now you guys understand how each term plays a role in providing a robust response. In the next lecture, I'll be showing you how you can implement or realize this controller on the Arduino platform. Now it should be said that this course approaches PID controllers in an intuitive way. Some of you may be familiar with classical control theory where designing a controller requires frequency domain analysis and system modeling. The reason I avoided the control theory approach was because a lot of people in Udemy that are watching who want to build their own, you know, robots, quadcopters, temperature controllers, they don't have exposure to differential equations or Laplace transforms. So that's why I'm approaching this in a way that everyone can understand it. So I just wanted to say that as a disclaimer as we go on throughout the course. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture.